This is a story about a paver patio. It's got ups, it's got downs, it's got danger, and it's got some moments that I wanted to give up. It's got some major screw ups that you can avoid. And it's got this pretty sweet idea I had for some benches. But most of all, this is a story about a project you can save a ton of money on by doing it yourself. And I think you're gonna get a kick out of it. Sitting around a fire is written into our DNA. Since cave people walked the earth, we've gathered around fire for warmth, food, and conversation. And this time of year, as the leaves change and the night air gets crisp, there's just nothing like sitting by the fire with family and friends. My old fire pit and flagstone patio needed to be torn down, and it was infested with black widow spiders, which necessitated a slow and methodical disassembly. I'll spare you the details and pictures, but those things move a lot faster than you would think. The sun can really sap the energy out of you quick, so setting up an awning to use during the project was a lifesaver on the hotter days. I worked out a deal with a friend of mine to borrow his mini skid steer. You can rent one of these from Home Depot for about $400 a day. But if I had this to do over again, I probably would have hired someone with a full-size skid steer for just the site prep. This took me almost a full day, but an experienced skid steer operator would have finished the whole thing in hours and it would have been a lot more accurate. If you've ever crawled around on your hands and knees hammering in landscape staples, you're gonna love this. This giant pogo stick I'm carrying makes it possible to load and push in those staples from a standing position. I just load the pocket of my tool belt with staples and it makes a task I used to dread much more bearable. We had about six days of wind and rain, which revealed I had low spots in my grading. So I fixed all those with the dingo and then ran the compactor over everything for good measure. I borrowed this compactor from a friend of mine, which saved me the cost of another rental. I hauled so much gravel back and forth. Easily the most time consuming part of this whole job was hauling gravel and pavers to the back of the house because I couldn't get them delivered any closer. So plan ahead for your project and get those materials as close to the job site as possible to save that time. I'm moving the hot tub as part of this and I'm planning another project requiring electrical soon. So I took a minute here to run conduit and drain pipe to those locations before spreading out the gravel. I was really not looking forward to moving this thing because it's super heavy, but it's the last step I need before I can actually start laying the pavers. I thought draining it would be enough that I could just push it, but no luck. So we took a little lesson from history and rolled it on logs. I was actually a little surprised this worked as well as it did, but I'll take the win because this project was about to get a lot harder. To be fair, most of the reason that this project got harder were my own fault, either from my inexperience of having never done pavers before or by trying to save some money and cutting a corner. But hopefully my mistakes will save you the same trouble if you're just starting out too. I got a mix of pavers from both the big box store and a local professional supplier. The majority came from the big box store and were delivered to the front of the house for $20. But I went to pick up the really nice pavers myself 
to save the much higher delivery fee. The way the weight was distributed on the trailer, this thing was like towing a tennis ball on a shoestring. I even double-checked the weights on everything, and it's well within the limit of the trailer and my truck's towing capacity. But it was so heavy, I couldn't even use the trailer jack to get it off the hitch. I had to just take out the pin and drive away. Okay, so it wasn't as bad as I make it sound, but it was a little stressful, and recognizing that the delivery fee was worth it would have saved me like half a day's work. The next few days were long and tiring. I loaded and moved every paper for this patio from one side of the house to the other, and then placed each one, all while fighting these number 10 gravel that for some reason ended up having a lot of much larger gravel mixed in. In retrospect, I absolutely should have used sand. It would have made it way easier and faster. But the number 10s were on sale at the quarry, and the installation instructions for the big pavers said it was an acceptable material. On the bright side, though, I picked up this cool rock hammer and chisel and learned that I kind of love it, even though I'm not great at it. At this point in the process, I was just realizing I'm not even a quarter of the way done. But these stones ain't gonna lay themselves, and as for this portion, the chisel just wasn't gonna cut it. That did not. I put a diamond blade on my angle grinder and got to work cutting the first straight edge. I've never cut stone with a grinder like this, so I strategically placed a safety paver just in case. It worked out great for such a small investment. It made nice clean lines and was the last hurdle for me to lay the rest of the papers. Or so I thought. miscalculated and I don't have enough of this stone to finish and it would be about probably 600 bucks to buy another pallet but that's about twice what I need to finish this so I'm gonna have to figure something out I came to this realization on a Saturday morning so even if I wanted to buy and waste the extra I wouldn't be able to order it until Monday and then with them having to order it and have it shipped in that was gonna put me at least another week behind. So I decided to modify the design and bring back some of the old flagstone for a little experiment. I figured worst case scenario, this would make it pretty easy to rip out and replace if it just looks terrible. It also gave me a good excuse to expand the porch around the upcoming sauna build. Sauna, 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 the steam room. In between all this, you may have seen in the background that I dry stacked the stones for the smokeless fire pit. I used a 36 inch fire ring that I bought off Amazon. I chose to dry stack these because I'm still not 100% sure this will be the final version of the fire pit. And I wanted to make sure that the smokeless setup actually works before I fully commit. So this company called Pavestone makes a product called Rumblestone. And it's essentially a system of standardized blocks that you can make all kinds of stuff with. And they've got a bunch of different plans. I saw this particular bench and I like the idea of it, but I wanted it to be wider and look just a little different. My main concern was that with a wider overall span, standard 4x4s would bow in the middle under the weight of several grown humans. My secondary concern was that over time in the sun, those 4x4s may also start to twist. To solve both those problems, I picked up these sticks of 4x4 steel instead. And the plan is to put seat slats on top to add a more modern look and prevent the burns to the bum that would occur from sitting directly on the steel. For the slats, I cut and ripped treated 1x6s to 2.5 inches wide by 16 inches deep. Then I rounded over the three top edges so they'd have a rounded front and a flat back. Then I sanded, pre-drilled, and stained them all with Minwax 
Red Oak Stain. While the steel and slats dried, I wanted to get the column bases in place so I could start on the edging and polymeric sand. I cut out where each column would sit and leveled the first course all the way around. Then, using the plans from the Pavestone website, I built up to where the steel would rest. I put down this flexible edging at first and immediately realized there was a near 0% chance it would hold over time without like 100 stakes. And it comes with 10. So I tore it up and decided to use concrete instead. This ended up taking like six bags of concrete to go all the way around, which surprised me. I had read online that you just slope it down at an angle to help with drainage, then backfill your dirt up to the top of the paver once it's dried. And this worked out great. I left this pile of dirt to backfill with, and it turned out to be almost the perfect amount. Before I do the pre-sand compaction of the pavers, it's important to get as much of the dust and rocks off the surface as possible. The last thing we want is for the compactor to pick up a rock and scratch up all that hard work. Likewise, I can't just use the metal plate on the bottom for the same reason. As far as I can tell, there wasn't a paver-specific pad made for this compactor at Harbor Freight. So I zip tied a standard rubber welcome mat to the bottom in the hopes that that would do the trick. One is none, two is one, etc. It's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. This is actually going a little bit better than I thought but because the rug isn't attached to the back, it's like vibrating off of the rug. So I'm gonna cut some holes right here and attach it back here. And I think we're good to finish this whole thing. Once the back was zip tied up, it worked like a champ the rest of the way around. I dumped out the sand and swept it into all the joints as directed, and they were not kidding about the whole sweep in at a 45 degree angle thing. It works so much better at filling the gaps quicker. It took about seven bags all together the first trip around. While compacting the sand, the rug ripped through one of the holes and broke a few of the zip ties. I was able to quickly fix it using two short pieces of slotted aluminum angle iron and a couple bolts. I sandwiched the rug in between the angles and tightened them down with the bolts. Then ran the zip ties through the slots, which gave it a much larger area to bite onto and got me back to compacting and putting down the second coat of sand. The compaction only dropped the levels an eighth to a quarter of an inch so it just took about one and a half bags on the second pass. Since we can't walk on the patio for 24 hours after we water down the sand, we wanted to get a few more things done before calling it a day. So I dug some holes for the trees and while she planted them, I started setting up the benches. I suspected that I didn't have enough blocks and I knew I didn't have enough landscape adhesive. So I mocked everything up so I could make a quick trip to the store the next morning. To my surprise, I had only missed one square block. I put these end caps on the steel to help keep moisture and critters out. Then 
I worked until I ran out of adhesive before spraying water on the patio to activate the polymeric sand. Just like with woodworking and applying that first coat of finish after staining, this color pop was extremely rewarding to watch. Those of you who do this professionally, is there a sealant or some kind of clear coat you recommend to keep it looking like this all the time? Is that even a thing? Drop me a note in the comments. And if you've made it this far, please like and subscribe. For small channels like mine, it really does go a long way in helping me create more content. The final assembly of the columns went pretty easily, except I'd missed one small detail. A wooden 4x4 is actually 3.5x3.5, but a steel 4x4 is true 4x4. So that changed the measurements just a bit, but luckily it still worked out by replacing a full width block with a half width block in between, then custom cutting stones to fit above each beam. I used self-tapping wood to metal screws to attach each of the seat slats, but I found that one in 10 of them would bind up and go wonky for no clear reason. So I started pre-drilling each hole and that made the rest of the installs a breeze. I'm gonna let these dry in the sun a week or so, then apply some clear deck sealant for long-term protection. This was an upgrade project for me and took about two weeks to complete, but I've always been a strong advocate of having a simple fire pit. So if a whole patio seems like a lot to take on right now, enough stones from the big box store to build just a similarly sized fire pit is less than $75 and can be set up in minutes. Whatever direction you decide to go with your project, here's wishing you many happy times tasty beverages, and good conversations with loved ones around the fire. Thanks for watching.